Yes, the Sony a7 III is still worth it in 2021, and I'm gonna talk about where it really just excels, especially in 2021. So let's get to it. What's up everyone, Tech Side Up, I'm Jay, and today we're talking about the Sony a7 III, why I think it's still relevant, and what I use it in my day-to-day -day life for. This is my favorite camera. This is my first professional camera I've ever owned, full frame, and I, fell in love with it. This is what really I think kickstarted a lot of things in my career. This is when I took my videography business to a whole nother level and I really just don't want to ever give up this camera even if it is ever outdated. This camera just means a lot to me and I'm really happy with everything I was able to get out of this camera. It still is really useful to me in 2021 and I want to talk about why it is really useful and more so who specifically can take really good advantage of this particular camera. Obviously, this is a great camera. You can use it for pretty much anything you need it to do, but there is one specific thing and one specific reason why this camera is not going to be outdated anytime soon. Before I get into why this camera is not going to go away anytime soon, I wanna talk about the specs. So I don't really like to talk about specs way too much, but it's important to talk about it because it will make sense later in the video. So this is a full frame 24 megapixel camera, shoots in 4K 30, also 1080, 120 frames per second, and it is an 8-bit camera, and um, obviously it shoots in S-Log, S-Log 2, S-Log 3, HLG, and uh, a few other different picture profiles as well. And this camera has dual card slots, so one for photography and one for videography, or you can use them both for whatever you need it to be, but that's what I do. I use one for one SD card for each thing, whether it be pictures or videos. This camera does not have a flip out screen. It just has a screen that vertically goes up and down, but does not have a flip out screen. And yeah, I think that's pretty much most of the main specs that people look for in a camera. Why is this important and why is this relevant in 2021? I've been thinking about this camera a lot specifically because of my line of work and a lot of my line of work involves Instagram. So most of the content creation I do for a lot of clients is through Instagram. And I think that's very interesting with this camera because I often don't film in 4K. The only time I post in 4K is if I do something on YouTube or if I am just looking for the best image quality possible. But if I'm filming in 4K, I can't film in 60 frames per second because it doesn't have 60 frames per second. So a lot of what I film is action and I like to slow down a lot of the footage. You can't slow down the footage if it's not filmed in a higher frame rate, which 60 frames per second, in my opinion, is a really sweet spot. So oftentimes I'm filming in 1080p for both 24 frames or 60 frames per second, but most of the time I'm filming in 60 frames per second. Obviously, it depends on the use. So some people who do weddings, some people who do uh, just normal videos for promotions can film in 4K and utilize that 4K 24, and some people don't ever go above 24 frames per second. But let's talk about one thing, and this is the elephant in the room about Instagram, that is compression. Instagram uses a lot of compression on a lot of their videos and as of the making of this video, Instagram still does not prioritize videos as much as they do photos. Now they're getting better and they're slowly starting to catch on that train that videos are starting to grow and a lot of people are trying to post more videos on Instagram. But as of right now, posting a 1080p video is actually a lot better than posting a 4K video. If you export your timeline to a 1080p timeline and you downscale it from 4K, it should be okay and you actually might get a little bit more quality. But for the most part, posting in 1080p is just fine and you're gonna get the most out of your Instagram videos with a 1080p timeline or a 1080p footage. So the reason why I think that is really awesome because if you look at the reasons to upgrade from an a7 III to maybe like an FX3, an a7S3, or even the new a7 IV, one of the bigger incentives is higher frame rates at 4K resolution. Again, if you're posting a lot on Instagram, if a lot of your clients are on Instagram, you can downscale that 4K 120 or 4K 60 to a 1080 timeline, but at the same time, you're kind of doing the same thing with this anyways. 
and that difference between 8-bit and 10-bit really makes a difference when it comes to color grading, perfecting your colors, but when we're talking just about Instagram that compresses it already a lot, it's not going to be 100% noticeable to the average person. And that comes to the same thing with a lot of my clients. My clients can't tell the difference between a cinema camera, my a7 III, and maybe in some case scenarios, my, my phone. So it really just comes down to how you use your cameras and how you present sort of that project and all that sort of stuff. So it's really interesting because we can get caught up in the newest things. Like I really want the FX3, like that's one of my dream cameras to have. I really also would, wouldn't mind having an A7S3 as well as maybe even the A7 IV. On a practical standpoint, I really don't need to upgrade it. I don't do anything that intensive just yet. Um, like I'm not doing any commercial work just yet. And because of that, I, and perfectly fine using my a7 III and it still is working for me to this day in 2021. So the reason why I made this video is because a lot of people are content creators, whether it's for their personal selves or for a business or for other people. And this is such a great value because the a7 IV just came out, because the a7 S3 just came out and all these other amazing cameras. This thing is going for cheap and this is one of the best cameras that you can still pick up and still use. And especially if you're a beginner, this is a really, really good camera to learn on and I still enjoy it. You probably can find this for a really good deal right now. But that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like this type of content and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.